Well, the inhibition of JAK2 has really opened up a completely different angle of activity for us in terms of medicines from allo fibrosis. Prior to the initial testing of JAK2 inhibitors, our agents had only been slightly helpful in improving anemia, slightly helpful in terms of improving splenomegaly, but it hadn't made a real impact on the significant symptomatic burden of illness. We could transplant patients with an allo transplant with myelofibrosis. And unfortunately, the majority of myelofibrosis patients really were not good transplant candidates, and it was a tough therapy, sometimes even inappropriate for individuals who might have a longer life expectancy with the illness. With the inhibition of JAK2, the inhibitors of JAK2 are inhibitors of the native JAK2. There are many agents. There's ruxolitinib, which is now commercially approved, and the other main JAK2 inhibitors in advanced testing are SAR302503, which is in phase 3 testing, CYT387, in phase 2 testing, and SBIO1518 in phase 2 testing. With these agents, uh, we have identified that the inhibition of JAK2 is very active for having a major improvement in the significant splenomegaly associated with this disease. Sometimes the spleen can be enlarged to a tremendous degree in this disease and cause great morbidity and mortality. Also, these agents have been highly efficacious in decreasing the significant symptomatic burden with the illness. Cachexia, night sweats, weight loss, fevers, bone pain, these can be very problematic for patients with myelofibrosis. Uh, really, none of the therapies we've tested before have made any significant impact on these difficulties and are pleased to see that this new class of drugs has been very uh, effective for these groups of difficulties.